and action. Harrison wants things to be real. It's gonna hurt, but he's gonna do it anyway. Nobody's gonna believe it. With a $295 million budget, this film is easily one of the most expensive films made. John's music is unparalleled. It's just incredible how original and how powerful the themes are that John creates for each element of the film. Fun fact, as the fifth film in the franchise way back in 1979, this was when George Lucas and Steven Spielberg made a deal with Paramount Pictures for five films. 44 years later, we finally have that fifth film. Today we'll be looking at, well, what took them so long, and the behind the scenes moments of this film. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Action is an essential element of what an Indiana Jones film is. Our goal was to do as much as we could for real. You just feel like anything could happen. But before we get into more of these moments, some trivia for you. What was the inspiration for both Indiana Jones and Chewbacca? Leave your guesses in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. It just fits Harrison like a glove. Preparation was not <laughs> really necessary. Harrison loves this character as much as the audience loves this character. So we ask ourselves what could be the next adventure. And in this case, it was what could be the last adventure. The premise of the film reads as follows. In 1944, during the Allied liberation of Europe in World War II, Indiana Jones is captured by Nazis while attempting to retrieve a stolen artifact. The development of this film started in 2016. Technically, it was revealed that Harrison Ford would be reprising his role in the franchise. Steven Spielberg came on to direct the film and Kennedy and Marshall as producers. And believe it or not, back in 2017, the film was pushed back to 2020 as Spielberg was working on Ready Player One at the time. All right, here we go, action! It feels great to be back as Indiana Jones. To have a chance as a director to collaborate with him is beyond thrilling. And problems with the script kept pushing back the release date as nobody could agree on certain things. Interestingly enough, Spielberg eventually stepped away from his role as director to a new filmmaker for a fresh perspective. It was this back and forth with James Mangold and Spielberg for a while until Mangold eventually took over and had a completely new script to look at. Hold on! When you're able to keep it real, that feels more visceral for the audience. Harrison still has that brash indie attitude. Get back! And it's really interesting to look at a project like this when it goes through a ton of changes and many different people coming and leaving the project and not always is the script the same and of course it goes through a ton of changes over the course of seven years. I have been fortunate enough to be associated with the films over quite a long period of time to with each film add more to the collection of musical material. I didn't know if John would do the whole movie. I only prayed. But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. What was the moment for you where you said, I am back in an Indiana Jones movie? Well, I mean, all it takes is to put on the leather jacket, the hat, hang a whip from my belt, and look in the mirror and, oh. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Ford's love and commitment of this franchise and character is what kept this franchise moving. Aside from the agreement to make five films, his continued passion for the character can't be understated. <laughs> it was really fun. 
Yeah, we met in Jim's, Jim Mangle's office uh, towards the end of the day. And uh, uh, I was quite nervous. And I was quite uh, thrilled uh, that uh, finally working with an ad actress that's taller than I am. Seeing him talk about the care put into each action beat will make any longtime fan endlessly smile, especially with the new looks of him in costume on set. It truly seemed like he was having the time of his life making this final film. You're walking among legends and you're aware of it. The only wonderful thing on this project is that all the legends are embracing you and are happy to be there with you. Whether you're talking about Harrison or Steven or Kathy or George or John Williams, what an opportunity. It's like being on an all-star baseball team. You just hope you rise to the occasion. Phoebe Waller-Bridge joins Harrison Ford during an interview with Fandango to talk even more about the film, specifically new villains and de-aging Ford for the role since the film is set in the 1960s. Would you like to start? Well, not smiling all the time. <laughs> well, that was a note. Seriously, it was a note that Jim had to give me all the time. Just stop smiling. You're meant to be frightened. But I was like, but I know, but he's wearing the hat. <laughs> Um, so that was a challenge. And the most interesting part of this is the beginning scene of the film where he explains how technology has grown so much that the production team was able to collect past films that Harrison was in and use that to shoot scenes with his face being younger. We come to find him in 1969. The world has changed around him. He's retiring as a professor and he's about to stumble into an adventure. Hold on. Sorry. Filming for this movie began in Scotland, shooting just outside the Scottish borders town of Melrose. There were other locations as well, including the UK, Italy, and Morocco. We get to see how they did a lot of the stunts with Harrison actually doing the stunts himself. And the goal with the film was to do as much as possible without special effects or CGI. <laughs> There's so much action and spectacle in this film, but also it's got hard. It's not just action for action's sake. You can see a human experience. Along the way, during interviews, we get to see the cast come together and discuss this film and the progress of it and see the moments that Harrison Ford ad-libbed. And he tells his perspective of showing his character after 15 years and where he's been and what's left of his story. The decision I'm most proud of is pressing to do this fifth film. We've been away from him for 15 years. That's enough time for him to change from the character that we've known to what you have left, which is an older man. And even though the film hasn't officially come out, the showings from early on have given critics the opportunity to give their take on the film, scoring it not horribly bad, however not the best either. Nonetheless, it's really up to the real audience of which can decide what was good in the film and what didn't work. <laughs> I'm having more fun than I really should. So don't tell anybody. At first he said, I'll write some themes. And then he just couldn't stop writing all the music to the movie. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming this afternoon. Given that this is a summer release film, it's more likely that people are more out and about and would likely trot to see this film, given its nostalgic feel, seeing Harrison Ford back as this character. I just remember it always being on. Just awe and excitement and danger. This is the franchise that I grew up watching. Indiana Jones movies would not exist in people's hearts and imaginations without Harrison Ford. Nobody can play Indiana Jones but him. And of course, with this film, it was already planned years ago that this would be the fifth and final film of the entire franchise. So it is official that this franchise has come to an end and there will be no sequels. Yeah, well, Ali, what are your, what's your answer to that question? What's my answer to that question? Oh. Um, well, I'm surrounded by... Idiots. <laughs> no. And as far as the answer to our trivia question, while developing the film with Spielberg and screenwriter Lawrence Kasdan, 
Lucas named the main character Indiana Smith, but Spielberg protested that it was too similar to the 1966 Steve McQueen western Nevada Smith and requested a change. The three agreed that the last name should be as universal and nondescript as Smith, so Lucas threw out Jones as a possibility. Indiana came out from Lucas's dog, an Alaskan Malamute named Indiana. The thing that I never get over okay. is how you sit on a scoring stage and John raises his baton. Every single time, you just go, oh my God. So we wanted to turn this around to you guys and ask what your thoughts were on all of this. Are you excited to see this film and what are your predictions and expectations? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.